Hello. So we're going to be doing some more farming tonight in the form of the harvest section of farming. Uh, I'll show you. Now these are all main crop potatoes, but they're not ready yet. But fortunately, what I did do is I interplanted them. You can see the flowers coming on. Let them bloom. Let them all bloom. Let the flowers, the flowers fall off. If you get little potato apples, which I haven't got any at the moment, if you get little potato apples, then uh, for me it's time. You can start digging them. I planted the ones at the top first in here. And these were the, uh, I'm, I'm sure these were Desiree. Although I might be wrong. Not often I'm wrong though, to be fair. So these are Desiree. We've got King Edwards, we've got Maris Piper, we've got, uh, and the last to be planted really were these ones, which were the uh, Sarpo Mira potatoes were the last to be planted got kestrel in that big uh, tub down there it's turning into a jungle as it always does if you plant up here i mean you've got a good uh, good two and a half foot there but it, it fills the gap there's a potato plant any time it will fill the gap but they were only planted in the kestrel were only planted in probably eight weeks ago so they've got a good long time yet, but the other ones were planted in probably coming up for 18, 19 weeks ago. So they'll be ready in about three, four weeks. This last lot though won't be. But if you can look inside there, you can see a different type of leaf. And that's the beetroot. So we're going to get the beetroot pulled out of there and see what we've got. I did pull some the other night actually. But uh, we'll see what we've got now. Yeah, so there's a big pile of beet leaf and beets. The beets themselves are sort of like golf ball size because they were they were stuck in and hiding amongst the potatoes. It's kind of opened up the potatoes and, and I, the, the plants themselves, and I'm hoping that the earth flow will get through into there now, and uh, you know not do them any harm. You don't want to get blight. You can get potato blight which is a disease that affects the leaf and uh, eventually crawls down the stem and kills the uh, kills the plants altogether. We don't want that. Decent airflow going through there should assist with that. So we'll see what happens with that. I planted between the rows here with all them radishes and we got hundreds of decent radishes off about uh, six weeks ago between these plants. Uh, just before that frost that knocked all the potatoes back. Up here in the frozen north, of course, you've got to be careful of things like that. But down in the south, they weren't really affected by uh, by the frost, by Jack Frost. And uh, everybody's pulling the potatoes out now. But up here, we're having to leave them a little bit later this time. Once you get a frost bite on them, <coughs> when they're about 10 or 12 inches high, the plants themselves, then... It knocks them back about three weeks, three to four weeks. So we'll be harvested. Our main potatoes are going to be harvested probably. Look at that bugger there. Look at him. Cheeky guy, there he is. Cheeky swine. That's it. Off you go. Go on. It's going to be a bloody pigeon pie if you carry on you. Look at that cheeky get. Quite unusual markings on him. Or her. Anyway, I'm digressing there with a pigeon. There's our uh, beets. I'm going to clean them up and see what we've got. Some of them are big tiny tiddlers, but you'll get some that are golf ball size and bigger. And that's what I want. I like them when they're like that size. So I've just thinned them out from there now. I'll leave the rest of them to crack on, but... Uh, I like to pickle the little ones like that, nice and sweet. Let's uh, take a look what's inside Brad's cage. Got that tooth, I've got to get that, I've got to get that tooth fixed. The dentists are going to be opening up soon. And uh, I just want to, I, it's, it's already been moulded that. It just wants fitting into place. 
so I can look like a human again. So, um, anyway, let's take a look in Brad's cage and see what's ready for harvesting in there. I think there's going to be plenty for us to go at tonight. So we're about to enter Brad's cage. As you can see there, there's um, there's beetroots growing in there as well. Immature beets at the moment. I hate coming in here, mate. It's for the kids, this. But I can see with I can spy with my little eye a great big head of broccoli there, and up there are the cauliflowers. Let's go and take a look. Go on, I'll, I'll break my knees for you. Now, if you can remember back a couple of months ago when we were actually planting in these uh, these brassicas, we had the brassica collars on, and the uh, the sheep's wool pellets, um, and the sheep's wool pellets are there to sort of try and deter the slugs from getting onto the plants and eating them. And as you can see there, it's uh, it seems to have worked well. They've been inside here so the birds can't get at them, and also the cabbage white butterflies. But there's always little tiny bugs that'll creep their way in <laughs> and uh, and have a go at your crops. But it's what you can do in it. Little little things like that, like having the. I've just pulled that away actually having the brassica collar on that's to deter the cabbage root fly so the root fly lands its legs generally around on the ground around where the stem and the roots are and then it'll bore the, the uh, little um, larvae will burrow down and attack your roots attack the base of your stems but when you put that on it's a, it's a deterrent for them they tend to lose the way and uh, and not get to your crops as, 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 uh, as much as they will usually do if you like well, that's the uh, the cauliflower that we've got there, just for a comparison. There's my hand. My hand's width or spread is about nine inches, so that's about ten inches round. That a good sized collie. There's a bit of insect frass on. Well, that can just be rinsed off, and and, and it's fine. It's a nice it's a nice curd. That nice curds on the cauliflower there, and they're all more or less the same as you're looking. In fact, that one looks a little bit bigger all in there and there are several more you can see there but they need to be taken out now really now's the time when they're at the peak of their goodness before the slugs and other creepy crawlies get their hands on them and the choppers around them and um, all this rain isn't going to help with that we are due a week or a week of rain and hot temperatures so these will just blow they're what they call blow these curds these massive curds or blow out in all directions and look unsightly. I mean, they'll be edible still if you don't leave them too long and they turn into actual flowers. But um, they're getting definitely ready for blowing them, so we're taking them. Let's get them out and get them in. We're going to um, freeze a lot of this stuff, parboil and freeze a lot of this. I and mean, I'm going to take some of the some of that leaf as well and get the old. Um, get the old green, green soup on the go brassica leaves of course you can eat any brassica plant I believe we certainly do and the kids so uh, we'll get some soups made out of that and even stir fries and stuff this weekend all right there we go not a bad little haul just took us about 40 minutes or so to get all of them out um, the beetroot there were a lot of small ones amongst them. In fact, I've still got loads of small ones that are probably around about probably around about that size, if you like, or smaller than that, like a ping pong ball size. But they're a good, they're a good size. They're a good, they're a good taste. The, the small ones are, are tend to be quite sweet. You don't want them when they're starting to get woody. That's on the cusp. That one. Um, so yeah, we'll get some pickling done with those, and don't uh, forget, boys and girls, you can always eat the uh, eat the leaf too. Although, uh, be careful if you've got any kidney issues. Don't eat too much of it if you've got poorly kidneys, because uh, I think it's oxalic acid, oxalic acid, or something like that. There's some acid that um, that's in the beets, uh, the beet leaf, that can be potentially a bit dodgy. But on the whole, it's very good for you. Um, just don't have too much of it if you've got any kidney issues. Try and stay clear, clear of that a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, the other curds are fantastic, aren't they? Look at those, they're nice. Bonnie curds. 
I have just caught them though because this one, if you look at this one, has just started to sort of break away from its uh, from its nursery and spread its wings, what they call bolting or blowing. The curds are just about to blow to blow there, so I've caught that one just in time. That broccoli head is as big as my head. That's a good size. Again, I couldn't encompass that with both hands. And, and again, the leaf, I mean, the leaf is, um, is in perfect condition. Needs a bit of a rinse where the white fly started to, grow, to give it some, bit, some attention on that one. But it's not widespread. There's the white life. The, the white life? The white fly. Now, all that, that needs is just to be washed. It just needs to be washed off. I strip it away, or I'm going to strip it away from the stem so you don't get as much fibrous sort of um, stringiness to the soups that we're going to be making. It just reduces that fibrous and string, stringy texture. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat that right now. Mm mmm. It's good. Okay. It's nice, that sweet. This is where my kids get it from. I'm always chomping. So we'll get those home, get them prepped up. We're maybe going to eat that one this weekend with our meals this weekend. And the rest of it's going to be parboiled and then uh, thrown into ice water. Look at Kelly Bram Bramwell, she knows what she's doing. Throw it into ice water and then get it into the freezer bags and freeze it up. These are going to be uh, boiled for about 10 minutes or so. And then the leaf's going to be used in um, stir fries this weekend. May I might even put it in with the soup. In fact, I will I'll put it in with the green soup that we're going to be making. The onion, potato and green leaf soup. I'm going to get some beet leaf in with that. Yeah, why not? But as I say, all the rest of it's got to be uh, prepped and frozen up to be eaten over the next few weeks and months. Now, there's a good 25 pounds in weight here. In fact, I'm going to weigh one of these cauliflowers and see what it is. I bet it's two pounds. Now, that's two pounds and 11 ounces by my reckoning that so I think we can knock a few ounces off with that stem so we'll call it two and a half pounds that and that's probably average for the haul that we've got in fact those two look a little bit bigger that one's probably about the same so is that one and that little tiddler there is probably at about three quarters of a pound so uh, So if we say £14 for the cauliflower, I'll see what that, that big boy is. I'll, I'll weigh a big boy and I'll weigh a, a sort of, uh, one like that size one. I'll do that one and that one. Yep, £2, we'll say. I'm calling that £2. I'm going to say £24 weight, at least, of veg there. That was two pounds, and these we'll call those another three pounds, so five pounds weight of um, the broccoli. Each one of these is two and a half pounds, and we've got five of those, so that's twelve and a half. We'll call it thirteen pounds. Eighteen pounds with the broccoli. Nineteen pounds, and all the leaf that we've got. These are relatively heavy as well. Not tons of leaf actually, there's some over there. I can pick through that if I like. But we're going to say £25. Which isn't bad, is it, for a night's work? Not even a night, about an hour's work, that. <laughs> Excuse me, it's not chewing my head off. I missed one. There's one still inside there. Yeah. Not bad, that. Not a bad haul. So, uh, I'm going to come down tomorrow and clean the rest of it up. All the leaf debris. 
take the nice leaves home with me tonight. It's really the same as like if you were going to get uh, kale or chard or something like that. Or if you wanted a, like a, if you were an elf and you wanted a shield, like a Lord of the Rings elf, you'd be alright with these, these leaves. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Be good. Friday night tonight, don't get too drunk. If you're a Liverpool fan, you've got every right to get drunk, I suppose, tonight, haven't you? So, uh, yeah, catch you later. I've been, uh, I've been Guru Mafinda. You've been fabulous as ever. And I can't speak because I've had a rough week. But uh, we'll be back down the plots tomorrow morning for more fun and japes. Probably see the wise old elf on Sunday as well and have a catch up with him. So take care, everybody. Look after yourselves and each other. And remember, we love you all. Bye-bye now.